Prison breaks, something that you only see in movies and shows, right? Wrong. There have been a, a lot of notable prison escapes over the years, some of which have been carried out by some pretty notorious criminals. Evil criminals who often continued their violent sprees once free. So, join me, your host James, as I bring you the top 10 evil prisoners from history that escaped. And we're starting things off with Alan Legere, aka the monster of Miramichi. Born in 1948 in New Brunswick, this guy committed a robbery with two accomplices in 1986 that resulted in the brutal beating of both of the owners who were an elderly couple. One of which, the husband, John Glending, did not survive. The trio were arrested and Legere began serving time at the Atlantic Institution Maximum Security Penitentiary. In 1989, he was transported to a hospital due to an ear infection, and it was there that he would make his escape. He pleaded with the guards to allow him to go to the washroom alone, and somehow he managed to get them to agree. Once he was inside the bathroom, he pulled out the small sharpened piece of metal he'd hidden up his rear, and picked the lock to his handcuffs. He fled from the hospital, and through a series of carjackings, managed to avoid being captured for seven whole months. And and he didn't lay low during this time either. He took the lives of four more people in completely random attacks. He burnt a victim's home down with two sisters inside, attacked another woman, Annie Flam, and her sister. This sister managed to make it out alive. And he took the life of Reverend Father James Smith. He was finally arrested again though, and remains in prison till this day. Number nine, Nikolai Zamugliev aka Metal Fang. Nikolai took the lives of at least five women engaging in brutal acts of violence that shocked the nation. He would then consume some of the body parts of his victims. His crimes earned him the nickname Metal Fang due to the dental work he used to bite his victims. He'd lost some of his teeth in a fight when he was younger, being fitted with metal dentures. In 1979, he was finally captured and sent to a mental hospital. He was released in just less than a year though, and guess what? he took the lives of three more victims, the last of which was actually a friend of his. He invited some friends over for a dinner party, and at one point, guests found him in the next room, having crouched next to his friend, eating him. He would spend eight years in a treatment center, but while being transported to another facility in 1989, he managed to escape. He managed to stay hidden for years, living in the mountains of Kyrgyzstan. He likely would have been found if it weren't for the fact that he got tired of this life and, and basically turned himself in. He remains housed in a specialized psychiatric clinic to this day. Next on the list is Gonzalo Lopez. Lopez was a convicted criminal with multiple life sentences. He made his escape from prison in May 2022, serving life terms for taking the life of Jose Ramirez in 2006 and the shooting of two police officers. Lopez saw an opportunity during a hospital transfer. While being transported with 15 other inmates, he seized the moment, stabbing the corrections officer before making off with the vehicle. Police shot the tires, but he managed to drive for another mile before crashing it and then fleeing into the forest. Lopez remained a fugitive, managing to evade law enforcement for several weeks. Tragically, on June 2nd, he resurfaced at a family ranch in Centerville, Texas, where he committed a horrific act, resulting in the deaths of five individuals, 66-year-old Mark Collins and his four grandchildren. The manhunt for Lopez intensified, and later that same day, a shootout between Lopez and the police broke out. In the end, Lopez got what he deserved, and no officers were harmed. Number seven, the Texas Seven. Texas Seven was a group of seven convicts who pulled off a prison escape in December of 2000. These inmates serving sentences for various crimes were all going to be in prison for a long time and feeling like they had nothing to lose, they planned an escape. They managed to overpower and subdue prison employees at the John B. Connolly unit in Kennedy, Texas. Using stolen weapons and clothing, they took advantage of a maintenance truck's cover and made their getaway. Their escape set off a massive manhunt across Texas. The group was on the run for over a month, committing a series of robberies and other crimes to help sustain themselves. They even took the life of a police officer during a robbery. The Texas Seven's run came to an end though on January 22, 2001 in Woodland Park, Colorado, when a tip led authorities to their hideout. There'd been an episode, I believe, uh, I can't remember the show, uh, Unsolved Mysteries or something, 
They showed them and like a bunch of people phoned and being like, I think I've seen those guys. Anyway, there was a standoff with law enforcement. One member took his own life and the rest were apprehended. The majority of them are now on death row. Next up, we have Sharon Kinney. Unlike most of the criminals on this list, Sharon has still yet to be found. Suspected of being responsible for the deaths of three individuals, including her husband, James, and the wife of a boyfriend in 1960, Kinney's actions led to a series of trials. She faced three unsuccessful attempts at prosecution for the death of her husband. As the fourth trial loomed, Kinney made a bold move and fled off to Mexico to evade justice. And while in Mexico, she became involved in yet another deadly encounter, claiming self-defense when she shot and killed a man. But Mexican authorities, uh, you know, they just weren't buying it. And she ended up being convicted, landing her in Mexican prison with a 13-year sentence. On December 7th, 1969, just four years into her sentence, she uh, capitalized on the facility's lax security measures. There was also a prison blackout, which helped, and she ended up making her escape slipping away into the night, never to be seen again. To this day, Sharon Kinney remains at large, holding one of the longest outstanding warrants in American history. At our number five spot, Richard Matt and David Sweat were two dangerous inmates who pulled off a daring escape from Clinton Correctional Facility in Dannemora, New York in 2015. These criminals used cunning and tools to cut through steel walls and pipes within their cells, and over a period of months, they created this series of tunnels and passages within the prison's walls, leading to the catwalks and utility tunnels. On the night of June 6, 2015, Matt and Sweat made their move. They crawled through the labyrinth of passages they'd made, emerging through a manhole cover outside the prison's walls. Of course, a manhunt was launched with law enforcement across the state and beyond joining in on the hunt. They managed to evade capture for a number of weeks, robbing cabins and seeking refuge in the wilderness. Richard Matt lost his life at the hands of law enforcement on June 26th. And David Sweat was captured again two days later, weakened and suffering from gunshot wounds. Next on the list is Donald Leroy Evans. This guy uh, was an absolute despicable prick. He took the lives of multiple people between 1985 and 1991. The true extent of these crimes I can't get into. He did more than just strangle people to death though. He would usually attack his victims at rest stops and public parks. And even though he was initially only connected to three cases, he later admitted to being responsible for the unsolved deaths of 70 other people across 22 states. In June of 1993, while in custody at Harrison County Jail, he managed to escape along with three other inmates. Luckily, it didn't take the cops long to find him. He had been hiding out in a shed. Evans ended up getting the death penalty, but his death would come much quicker than it likely would have. Thankfully, he was uh, stabbed in the shower by a fellow death row inmate in 1999. And at number three, Alexander Solonik, nicknamed Russian Jackal and Alexander the Great. This guy was a Russian mob hitman and was damn good at his job. He was also really good at escaping from prison, apparently, which he did a number of times. The long arm of justice had finally caught up with him and he was arrested, but he managed to escape out of the courthouse window, fleeing to Siberia. He was caught and arrested again, spending two years in jail for escaping through the ventilation system. He went back to working as a hitman, but after a shootout in 1995, he was arrested once again in Moscow. The mob managed to bribe a guard to help him escape this time, and he exited his cell, scaling the wall with help of a rope and some climbing gear, and then entered into a waiting BMW. He headed to Greece, where he intended to spend the rest of his days, I guess, and uh, that's exactly what happened, only he didn't live as long as he wanted or expected to. The mob wanted to tie up any loose ends and enlisted one of Solonik's very own friends, a fellow hitman, to take him out. This guy like sounds like the real life John Wick or something. Next on the list, we have James Earl Ray. Ray, who was serving a 99 year prison sentence for the uh, for killing civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr., managed to escape from prison for a second time on August 7th of 1997. This escape occurred at the Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary in Tennessee. Ray and six other inmates managed to escape, but their freedom was short lived as law enforcement launched a massive manhunt. And just three days later, on June 3rd, he was recaptured in a wooded area about eight miles from the prison. 
His second escape was uh, not as successful as his first. Had also been in prison for something else before that incident and managed to escape for like months or something like that. Ultimately though, led to tighter security measures in the prison system and Ray would spend the rest of his life behind bars, dying in prison in 1998. Finally though, at number one we have Ted Bundy. If you want to talk about one of the most notorious criminals in American history, this guy was Definitely one of them. Managed to escape authorities on two separate occasions. In 1977, Ted Bundy pulled off two daring escapes from custody. The first escape took place in Aspen, where he was awaiting trial. Bundy decided to represent himself in court, which gave him access to the law library at Pickens County Courthouse. And on June 7th, he made his move. Unshackled and unguarded, he jumped out of a second floor window of the courthouse. Took authorities six days to catch him again. The second escape happened later that same year, on December 30th. While he was incarcerated, Bundy managed to carve a hole in the ceiling of his cell through his makeshift tunnel he crawled to freedom. Not only was this guy a truly evil human being, but he was cunning and resourceful on top of it. Not a good combination. Good for him, but not good for everyone else. With all that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video. Mm -hmm.